I heard that my wife's junior is about to die. His only wish is to hold a wedding with my wife, Samantha. The moment she agreed, I notified the system. Please, disconnect me from this world. Samantha Sue asked for a divorce twice. I failed to make it to the civil affairs office both times, until I lay on the operating table as a terminally ill patient. She, as the lead surgeon, was horrified and desperate. How could it be you? What broke her even more was the fact that I would die in her hands. According to the system setting, leaving her with eternal guilt. Chapter 1. Samantha is a surgeon, recognized as the golden hand in the hospital. She's very busy, so busy that she only notified me of the divorce through WeChat. Find some time to get the divorce done. Romy is emotionally unstable. He can't wait. I looked at the cold dishes on the table, the edges of the cream cake starting to melt, just like our relationship, which has crumbled after 10 years. From school uniforms to wedding clothes, I made several calls. It took until the fourth one for her to answer. Her voice was indifferent. What's the matter? I was busy just now. Instinctively, I wanted to apologize, thinking she was in surgery. Doctors always have to be responsible for their patients. But then, I heard a man's soft laughter on the other end. The clothes are off. Come quickly. Blood rushed to my head instantly. Samantha, we're not divorced yet, are we? She calmly explained. You misunderstood. It was for giving Romy's dog a bath. I closed my eyes, my nails digging into my flesh. Samantha, if we divorce, I will disappear. This is the original setting of the system. No one can change it. She didn't say anything, and I heard the sound of movement on her side. I guess she changed to a different place to take the call. She lowered her voice. Alexander Wong. I've explained many times. It's just a ceremony. After fulfilling his wish, we'll remarry. Why do you always threaten me with disappearing? When she calls me by my full name, it usually means she's angry. Seeing that I didn't respond, Samantha's breathing became heavier, because she once said that what annoyed her most was my silence and lack of response. Alexander Wong, be rational. I sneered. You're staying at Romy's house late at night, talking to me about rationality. Don't you find that funny? After all, legally speaking, she's still my wife. There was a long sigh on the other end. Then, coldly, one word at a time, she pierced my heart. Alexander, Friday morning, let's finalize the divorce. Chapter 2. I scooped a bite of cream into my mouth, and a bitterness spread across my tongue. It's funny, she remembered to bathe Romy's dog but forgot that today is my birthday. Maybe her heart has already left, and her memories have followed. System, can you sing a birthday song? I can't. I can only sing a funeral dirge. I chuckled. Then forget it. Save it for when I die. Disconnect me from this world. If I leave here, I can return to the original world. In that world, though I don't have a healthy body, I do have a family who loves me. And friends, I miss the rice noodle rolls downstairs and the beef soup at the old market. And, of course, my dad's warm clay pot porridge. Here, I'm the one who cooks for Samantha, because she's a doctor. Her hands are important for her patients and for her. But when I saw Romy's social media post, I broke down. Her well-proportioned hands, the hands I've protected so well were peeling shrimp for him with good temper. The caption read, The golden hand only peels shrimp for me. It made my previous efforts seem like a joke. Host, are you not going to try harder? No, my heart is dead. From the moment she decided on divorce, the task of conquest was destined to fail. It's just a matter of dying sooner or later. So why not free myself sooner? The system sighed softly. Autonomous disconnection will be somewhat painful. The good news is, you can choose a method of death. I thought about it seriously, and smiled faintly. Samantha never believed I would disappear, then let me die at the hands of her miracle hands. I guess her expression at that time would be quite something. Chapter 3. I couldn't make it to the civil affairs office on Friday to get a divorce. After the disconnection procedure began, my body quickly showed symptoms of decline. With an extremely low immune system, I developed a fever. My lips were so dry that they cracked. I instinctively called out, Sammy, water. In the past, whenever she was home, I could always drink water at just the right temperature. I liked and got used to her accommodating me in small things, but when I opened my eyes, I remembered she had already moved out. On the day she agreed to marry Romy, he's my teacher's son. For the sake of my teacher, I have to take care of him. He's almost dead. It's just a wedding ceremony. Be generous. That day I stared at her in a daze. If it's just a ceremony, why do we need to get a divorce certificate? She lowered her eyes, her fair and delicate face covered with a layer of frost. We can't let him be the third party, can we? Yes. We hadn't legally divorced. Wouldn't that make him the third party? Turns out she wanted to do the whole act. I looked at her indifferently. Samantha, if we divorce, I will never remarry you. She froze for a second, dropped her suitcase, and grabbed my arm tightly. What did you say? If you're not with me, who will you be with? You said that you're an orphan in this world, and besides me, 
you have no other family. Maybe she grabbed me too hard, or maybe she pierced my heart. I pushed her away patiently. Let go. You're the one who didn't want me first. But she didn't care and threw herself into my arms. Thinking of our ten years together, I couldn't help but tear up. Alex, don't feel bad. If you're sad, I'll feel even worse. How could I not want you? She comforted me awkwardly, kissing me from my lips all the way to my Adam's apple. She said she was an orphan, and her teacher had taken care of her a lot since she was a child. She said Romy was just a younger brother. I believed her. After all, he had a rare terminal illness, and was almost dying, wasn't he? The system said that if I restored the marriage relationship within three months, the task would not be considered a failure. Until a week later, I went to the hospital to bring her some nutritious soup, passing through the open-air parking lot. Romy was sitting in the driver's seat, the windows all open. She stood outside, her hands in her white coat pockets, looking graceful. The next moment, she bent down and kissed her so-called younger brother. It felt like a bucket of cold water was poured over me. I numbly watched her stretch out her fair, slender fingers, coquettishly rubbing his head. Be good. Go home and rest. He seemed to mumble something, put on sunglasses, and drove away. All of this was so familiar. She used to do the same with me. She wanted to fulfill his wish to get married. And at that moment, I felt a terrifying thought. Was it just sympathy and responsibility? Maybe her heart had already drifted away. While not violating our relationship vows, she rationalized drifting to another man. No wonder she was eager to get a divorce and marry him. That day, I threw the nutritious soup into the trash, and along with it, the heart that once loved her without reservation. Chapter 4 In the feverish haze, the phone rang again and again. I struggled to find my phone and answered. Samantha's somewhat annoyed voice came through. Can you be more punctual? I've been waiting for you for half an hour. Oh, I was so feverish that I forgot today was the day to get divorced. I weakly said, I have a fever. Can we reschedule? My whole body felt weak. I couldn't even crawl out of bed. How could I go? She chuckled softly on the other end. Did you forget I'm a doctor? With your strong as an ox constitution, how could you have a fever? You're 28, not a little boy like Romy. Stop being childish. I couldn't help but laugh in frustration. You might not know this, but the little boy you're talking about is only two years younger than me. She used to call me a little boy all the time. Maybe she's just tired of me now. It doesn't matter. I've already lost any expectations for her. Chapter 5 The second time we were supposed to get divorced, I still didn't make it. Something unexpected happened on the way out. At an intersection, a two-year-old girl in a McDull jumper rushed out on her short legs looking for her dad. A speeding car lost control while turning the corner. Without thinking, I pushed her hard towards the safety zone. With a bang, I felt like I was about to be shattered. The driver didn't stop for a second. Stepping on the gas and speeding away, I turned to look. The license plate looked familiar. In a flash, I remembered the parking lot at the hospital. Romy's car. It was him. The little girl was scooped up by her panicked family, crying loudly. Uncle. Uncle is hurt. I only felt pain. That kind of pain where your organs feel like they've been smashed. But there was no blood as I expected. System. Am I going to die? It's a bit regretful that things didn't go according to plan. But saving a little kid before I die makes me feel there's no regret. The system hesitated for a few seconds and then responded calmly. Congratulations. You won't die until the set death date. Until the day you disconnect. The symptoms from the car accident will not fully manifest. The system then awkwardly added. This is a benefit I fought for you. For some reason. I found the system a bit endearing. I smiled. Great. Let's let Samantha see what her new husband has done to me. The little girl's father and grandmother were all around me. Her father. With reddened eyes. Said. You saved our baby. You saved our whole family. They almost knelt down before me. I kept insisting I was fine but they still enthusiastically put me in their car and drove me to the hospital. How can you be fine? The car's bumper was dented inward. How can a person be tougher than a car? Helplessly. I had to inform Samantha in advance. I was in a car accident. Let's reschedule. Chapter 6. I didn't expect that the hospital they brought me to was the one where Samantha works. Let me see the test results. A familiar voice sounded above me. Samantha stormed in like a gust of wind. A thin layer of sweat on her forehead. She looked as if she had just rushed back from outside. The other doctor patted her shoulder. Dr. Sue, don't worry, he's fine. Before the system set death date, no instrument can detect any issues with my body. Samantha carefully reviewed every paper report. When she looked up again, her eyes were sharper, with a touch of unfamiliarity. No external or internal injuries. What kind of car accident was this? Alex, you've missed two appointments already. What are you playing at? I folded my hands. I got into a car accident, by the way. It was your new husband who hit me and fled the scene, without thinking. She frowned and retorted. Impossible. Romy is very honest. He wouldn't do such a thing. So, 
You mean I'm dishonest, that I would lie. We both froze after I said that. A flicker of unease crossed her eyes, because she realized that she trusted Romeo more than she trusted me. In my mind, I asked the system, will he get caught? The system responded firmly, yes, this world still operates under the rule of law. Oh, that puts my mind at ease. Let the law judge her innocence. If it weren't for the system protecting my life, that kind of impact should have killed me instantly. She's just a hit and run criminal. I looked at my watch. Samantha, let's go now, to the civil affairs office. Otherwise, I don't have much time left. She put her hands in her pockets, her tone very indifferent. What do you mean? You don't have time. I'm dying. Three days from now, at four in the afternoon, I once asked the system, is there any significance to this time? Ten years ago, at four in the afternoon, was when you two met. Oh, so it begins and ends the same. Samantha glanced indifferently out the window, her tone somewhat impatient. Alex, you should go see a psychiatrist. I couldn't help but laugh in anger. Samantha, the one with the problem is you. Wanting everything at once. Pretentious coquette. I turned to leave, but she grabbed my wrist. Haven't you been eating well? You've lost weight. None of your business. Eat first. Alex. I was about to refuse when her phone vibrated. I saw the screen display. It was Romeo. Samantha instinctively let go of my hand. He was whining on the other end, saying he had a nightmare and was scared. Samantha softly comforted him with a few words. She glanced at me and then said to him, M.M., I'll be back soon. As she ended the call, a flicker of hesitation crossed her eyes. Alex, you should go eat. I sneered inwardly. Was it really a nightmare? Or was it guilt and fear after hitting someone? Serves him right. Samantha chose him again and missed what could have been our last meal together. I wonder if she'll regret it when she thinks back on this later. Chapter 7 The final countdown of my life. I lay on the cold operating table. Waves of pain. As if my organs were being shredded. Hit me one after another. It's okay. Just bear with it. Soon. I'll be able to go back and have my dad's warm clay pot porridge again. Samantha's angry voice still echoed in my ears. Alexander, do you really think I have no temper? Romy is about to die. Can't you be more generous? Because of my third missed appointment. But I had told her. I had no time left. I was dying. She just didn't believe me. Ten minutes later, Samantha entered the operating room, dressed in her surgical gown, her face expressionless. This surgery wasn't originally hers, but the system was set. No matter who started it. It would end with her. System. What is my terminal illness? A tumor surgery. Samantha's golden specialty. Somehow. The system sounded a bit gleeful. The anesthetic had already been administered. Samantha was ready. Her assistant couldn't help but ask softly. Dr. Sue. Are you okay? The assistant knew my identity. They had even admired her privately. Dr. Sue is really strong. Anyone who can operate on their own husband is ruthless. But Samantha herself hadn't noticed it yet. Lying under the surgical drape was the husband she had angrily scolded just over an hour ago. She took the scalpel handed to her by the assistant. Skillfully, she made a 16-centimeter incision on my abdomen. This tumor surgery was not particularly special compared to the ones she had performed before. Even if it failed, it would be within the realm of possibility. After all, the surgery was extremely difficult, with a very low success rate, but thanks to her years of professional experience, the surgery was still within her control. However, the word, accident, is something humans can never fully control. For instance, Samantha unexpectedly noticed a faint pink scar near the incision. Her hand instantly stopped midair. The assistants were a bit surprised. This had never happened before, especially not when the patient's skin was already cut open. Dr. Sue was in a daze. I was the only one in the room who knew why. Chapter 8. That scar. Samantha knew it all too well. During countless nights of passion, she had touched it, kissed it. Alex, this scar is yours but it's a mark I'll carry for life, because it was the scar from the knife I took for her. When she was still a resident, I brought her food. After a failed surgery, an irrational patient wielded a fruit knife wildly. At that time, she was just a young doctor, and it had nothing to do with her, but when she was helping another innocent patient who had fallen, the knife was swung toward her abdomen. Watch out. I pushed her away, and the knife stabbed into my abdomen in the chaos. Samantha immediately covered my wound with her hand. Blood flowed from between her fingers. Soaking her hands, her face was as pale as a sheet, and she struggled to support me as we staggered toward the emergency room. It wasn't until my wound was treated that, the empty look in her eyes regained a bit of light. She looked at me with red-rimmed eyes and buried her head in my neck. Alex, seeing you bleed hurt me so much, I would rather have died myself. I smiled and patted her, then will you treat me better from now on? She kissed my earlobe, I'd give you my life if you asked for it. That day, she lay in my arms, carefully avoiding my wound. She said very seriously, Alex, you're too kind, please, 
Think more about yourself in the future. Okay. She was the one who once told me to think about myself more. Now. She's the one telling me Romy is innocent. Asking me to be generous. The assistant softly reminded her. Dr. Sue. Is there something wrong? Samantha ignored him and quickly took two steps forward. Suddenly. She yanked off the surgical drape covering my face. Her pupils contracted instantly. Her face was filled with horror and despair. How could it be you? At that moment. I couldn't respond to her. The anesthesia had taken hold. And I drowsily closed my eyes. My face was pale. And cold sweat beaded on my forehead. It was the final stage of the disconnect procedure. It did hurt. But it was almost over. Samantha's Adam's apple bobbed several times. And her voice trembled uncontrollably. Alex. You can't die. I won't let you die. She wanted to touch me. But she couldn't. Afraid of causing a bacterial infection. The assistants were surprised. Didn't Dr. Sue know the person under the scalpel was her own husband? But their professional training quickly brought them back to focus. They turned their attention back to the operating table. The system's cold voice echoed in my mind. This is probably the most torturous surgery Samantha has ever performed. After all, this surgery only had a 5% success rate. Anyone would be nervous, right? When she picked up the scalpel again, her fingers trembled slightly. But soon, she suppressed the trembling with amazing willpower. Years of professional training kicked in. The surgery continued in an orderly manner. Continue administering the anesthetic. The tumor shows signs of spreading. With partial detachment and massive bleeding. Use embolization to block the blood vessels. Continue separating adhesions and remove the diseased tissue. Samantha truly deserved her reputation as the most famous and youngest surgeon in the hospital. Everything was under her control. As she said, the assistant's voice was tinged with excitement. It's a success. They were quietly cheering. But I wasn't surprised at all. The surgery was temporarily successful because my disconnect time hadn't arrived yet. Only two hours left. Chapter 9. After the surgery, following the protocol, I needed to stay in the observation room for an hour, seeing that all my vital signs were good. Samantha regained her calm and composed expression. The whole space was just me and her, except for that brief conversation in the hospital after the car accident. We hadn't spent more than an hour together in a long time. She leaned down and whispered in my ear. I never thought these hands would ever perform surgery on Alex. The anesthetic wore off quickly, thanks to the system setting. I opened my eyes and mocked her. I never thought these hands would ever peel shrimp for someone else. In this world, like her, I am also an orphan. I earned my tuition fees bit by bit on my own. I remember when we had just graduated. We were so poor that we couldn't even afford a washing machine. The winter in the south was wet and bone chilling. Every time I washed clothes, my fingers turned red from the cold. But I never let her do it even once. Don't bother. Your hands are meant to hold surgical tools. To save more lives and families. Alex. Do you have a filter for doctors? Yes. In the original world. My life was also saved by a doctor. Alright. I won't let Alex down. The room was so quiet you could hear a pin drop. Samantha seemed to be choked by my words. It took a long time before she sighed softly. Alex. Romy is about to die. Can you not hold a grudge against him? I chuckled. I'm about to die too. So why shouldn't I hold a grudge? Samantha's eyes darkened instantly. You won't die. Don't you trust my skills? Perhaps realizing that I was now a patient too. Her voice softened a bit. When did you get this illness? The day you said you wanted a divorce. And didn't believe I would disappear. She was choked by my words again. So she had to change the subject. I know you don't like scars. So I stitched the incision very neatly for you. The scar will be minimal. I didn't respond. The silence in the air made her feel a bit uneasy. She wanted to say something more. But a nurse came in. Dr. Sue. Your phone has been ringing non-stop. Alex. I need to take this call. After a while, when Samantha came back, her expression was a bit unnatural. Alex, I have an urgent matter to attend to. I'll have the nurse take care of you. I knew exactly what she was going to do. Her original plan was to divorce me in the morning and hold a lawn wedding with Romy in the afternoon. Dr. Sue, you really are a master of time management. You're busy enough. Samantha, I only have less than two hours left in this world. Are you sure you don't want to say your final goodbye? Actually. I didn't want to spend much more time with her either. If she stayed, I would consider it as her last bit of sincerity toward our years of relationship and marriage, and I would reciprocate appropriately, let her feel a little less guilty, but she didn't want to. Samantha stood up. Even after three hours of intense surgery, she was still energetic and graceful. The emotional breakdown she had when she discovered the patient was me had completely disappeared. Alex, after you've recovered, I'll personally schedule an appointment for you with the psychiatric department. This calm, non-negotiable tone. Honestly, I don't like it at all. I sneered. Dr. Sue, I hope you won't regret it. Samantha's expression was indifferent, as if I was just throwing a tantrum. She glanced at me and smiled lightly. 
I won't. Alex, what you need now is a good rest. With that, she disappeared at the door, because the phone in her pocket had already urged her several times. By now, her wedding venue should be full of guests. Romy probably couldn't wait any longer. I felt at peace. Samantha, this is your own choice. Chapter 10. After Samantha left, the system sighed in my mind. She missed her last chance. I was surprised that the system had any sense of regret. Host, you're a kind person. I secretly fought for a chance for you to live well in this world. If she had chosen you today, the surgery's success would have become a reality. I smiled. System, did you forget? Even if she stayed today, I couldn't have lived, because Romy already killed me when he hit me with his car. The system was silent for a moment. Yes, I know. Host, do you want to know why Romy was speeding that day? Because he was rushing to the airport to pick up Samantha. That's right. It was the day Samantha came back from a business trip. He was in a hurry to pick her up, because Samantha needed to rush to divorce me. The cause and effect of fate. I sighed softly. Even if I hadn't been in the car accident, and the surgery was very successful, I wouldn't want her anymore. You don't love her anymore. The system had witnessed our ten years together. Yes. Why? The system asked. Aren't you the system? How could you not know? Ahem. A system isn't omnipotent. Sometimes there are oversights. I smiled. Romy's house doesn't have a dog. Samantha told me this a long time ago. Both her teacher and her junior were allergic to animal hair. How could someone allergic to animal hair have a dog at home? The system was stunned for a while. So that night, they couldn't have been bathing a dog. That line on the phone, the clothes are off, come quickly, was enough to explain everything. She had emotionally and physically drifted away, and calmly deceived me. System, she's tainted. I can't take her back. The system uncharacteristically swore. Fuck, what a scumbag. Let her drown in her guilt. Chapter 11. Not good. The patient is hemorrhaging massively. Tissue infection. DR. Sue's surgery has led to severe complications. Heart has stopped. Initiate artificial heart lung support. Prepare ECMO. How did the patient's heart, liver, spleen, and lungs rupture? Actually, I had already completed the disconnection. My soul floated above, watching my life slowly fade away. Why can't we reach DR? Sue by phone. We got through once, but it was hung up. I asked the system, do you know who hung up? Oh, this is interesting. It was Romeo. The system sounded like it was enjoying the show. Come on, host. This system will take you to the wedding. The system is getting more and more endearing. Before leaving, I took one last look at myself on the operating table. The injuries from the car accident had fully manifested. Was it this severe? My entire body was shattered, with my arm and left leg twisted in an odd way. They must be broken. How pitiful. At least I managed to push that little girl out of the way. She was so cute, so adorable. Thank goodness she's okay. Chapter 12. Turns out, watching someone else's wedding is quite interesting. Flowers piled up like mountains. Colorful balloons floating around. It looked like happiness, but it was stolen happiness. System, the red wine on the long table looks pretty good. Host, you seem a bit happy. Do I need to remind you that this is your wife's wedding? I wrinkled my nose, because I'm about to go home. Of course, I'm happy. As for Samantha, she can't affect my mood anymore. When I first realized she was drifting away, I was depressed, resentful. I even doubted myself. I had sleepless nights. When I closed my eyes, my mind kept replaying images of her holding his hand, laughing as they kissed, even embracing each other in bed. The world I had once protected collapsed. Later, I realized such behavior was foolish. You shouldn't punish your kind self for a woman who has changed her heart. What you need to do is work hard to find opportunities to live in the sunlight. Host, look, there's the scumbag. Samantha appeared on the lawn in a white wedding dress, gentle and beautiful, elegant and poised. The groom. Well, he's handsome too, with a graceful demeanor. At least there's no sign of the panic of a man who killed someone three days ago. I slowly floated next to Samantha. I heard her softly ask Romeo, where's my phone? Romeo's eyes flickered slightly. In the dressing room, I kept it for you. The finely tailored wedding dress certainly couldn't fit a phone. Did I get any calls? I think there was one. Romeo hesitated. Should I get it? But the wedding is about to start. Samantha paused. No need. She calmly looked ahead. I wonder if she remembered our wedding. We were so poor we could only afford silver rings. Yet we were so happy. Alex, do you regret marrying a poor girl like me? No. Dr. Sue is a rising star. Indeed. Later, I gave her a big diamond ring. But she never seemed as happy as she was before. Alex, my junior is sick and dying. Can I fulfill one of his wishes? He's only 26. So pitiful. Sammy, you should go. Alex, his wish is to marry me. I froze. Samantha, that's an unreasonable wish but he's dying. Dying doesn't mean he can steal someone else's wife, someone else's love, 
Sammy, this wish is immoral. That day, she stood on the balcony for a long time. Finally, she said, in a voice as cold as ice, Alex, you've changed. You're not as kind as you used to be. And then she left me in a room full of silence. Samantha, did you forget? I'm most afraid of being alone. I sat in the empty living room, turning on every light, but it still felt like something was missing. In the end, I buried my face in my arms, curling up into a ball. It wasn't me who changed. Samantha, it was you. When she was with Romeo, I called her. My stomach hurts. Samantha, my stomach hurts. That day, she was with Romeo at the top of the Ferris wheel. They say that kissing up there represents love and eternity. I didn't have a stomach ache. I was just standing at the bottom of the Ferris wheel, watching them sit closely together. I was heartbroken. Samantha knew my body well. On the phone, her tone was cold. Alex, I'm a surgeon, not a gastroenterologist. At that moment, I felt like dying. When someone can't tolerate your occasional childishness, it's likely they don't love you anymore. Love and lack of love are always clear cut. Chapter 13 System Is it almost time for the ring exchange? That diamond ring is really shiny. Must have cost a lot. The system was almost amused by me. Host, shouldn't you be more concerned about when the police will arrive? What's the rush? Let them be happy for a little longer. That way, when the truth comes out, it will hurt even more. Romeo smiled at Samantha. Senior, I've liked you for a long time. Today, this wish finally comes true. Samantha's expression was a bit unnatural. Her eyes lowered, and she seemed distracted. Maybe she was remembering our wedding day. She had said the same thing to me. Alex, marrying you. This wish has finally come true. The irony is that today, she left me in the hospital to fulfill someone else's wish. She probably just took off our wedding ring not too long ago. There was still a faint mark on her ring finger, but I didn't have one. The wedding ring I once cherished so much. I threw it in the trash the day she agreed to marry Romeo, never to be taken back. At this moment, Samantha's delicate fingers picked up the diamond ring to put it on Romeo. Suddenly, several uniformed police officers barged in through the flower arch. The system's voice had a hint of excitement. Oh, the show's about to start. Do you need some sunflower seeds? Ahem. Host, don't forget, I'm on duty right now. I almost laughed at the system. Romeo, you've been reported for hit and run. Romeo's lips trembled uncontrollably, like a drowning man, tightly gripping Samantha's hand. I I didn't. The police, used to people denying the truth, continued calmly. Surveillance footage shows that on the 11th of this month at 2.10 p.m., you were driving a car with the license plate LRY 99. You hit a person on Wang Hai Road and fled the scene due to speeding. The victim was a young man. At this, I saw Samantha's fingers tremble slightly. She was smart enough to realize that the person Romeo was supposed to pick up that day was her. Samantha's face turned grim as she pulled her arm back and stepped away from him. She stared at Romeo fiercely. You switched cars to pick me up that day because you had hit someone with the original car. Romeo was shaking all over. She couldn't help but violently grab his collar. Did you hit Alex? Romeo was incoherent. Senior, let go. I don't know. It's impossible. There were no cameras there. The police calmly informed him. The cameras were installed the day before. Romeo staggered slightly. One more thing to inform you of. You're also under suspicion of purchasing forged medical records and will need to cooperate with the investigation. Romeo's face instantly turned ashen, and he no longer had the strength to argue. He collapsed like a ragdoll, being taken away by the police. What awaits him is the judgment of the law. The guests in the crowd began to murmur in outrage. What a disgrace. Getting arrested on your wedding day. He seemed so honest and simple, but he hit someone and ran. That's cold-hearted. He wasn't even sick. Bought fake medical records to pretend to be terminally ill and trick us into pitying him. That's despicable. Isn't the bride supposed to be a top-notch doctor? How could she not notice? Samantha couldn't possibly not hear this. At this moment. It was like she had been slapped hard across the face. Host, did Samantha really not notice? I smiled. Maybe she just didn't want to notice. She wanted to be the dragon-slaying warrior who saved the prince. But she didn't realize that she was the dragon. The system huffed indignantly. Ugh. What a new breed of scumbag woman. Chapter 14. Samantha got her phone from the dressing room. Unfortunately, the phone was dead. Black screen. She quickly turned around and ran toward the parking lot. She was in such a hurry that she even tripped and fell along the way. She floored the gas pedal and sped towards the hospital. Host. She seems to have run several red lights. Well. Then she can look forward to having her license revoked. She bit her lip. Still wearing her wedding dress. As she rushed all the way to the hospital room. Where's Alex? Where's Alexander? The nurses were frightened by her frantic appearance. Dr. Sue. There's no Alexander here. How could there be no one? Are you sure you did your job properly? Fortunately. Her assistant stopped her in time. Mumbling. He spoke up. Sister Sue, 
there really is no Alexander here. Usually calm and composed in her work, Samantha was now losing her mind and her composure. That's impossible. Where did he go then? Alexander is in the morgue. Samantha staggered a bit. She grabbed the assistant by the collar. That's not possible. He was fine just a while ago. The surgery was successful. What nonsense are you talking about? Chapter 15. On the way to the morgue. With every word the assistant said, Samantha's face grew paler. His internal organs looked like they were shattered by a strong impact. It seemed like he was in a severe car accident. She was just muttering to herself. Impossible. The surgery was clearly a success. The assistant had no choice but to tell her the truth. Sister Sue, the sutures you did, they all split open. The intestines. The intestines spilled out. Samantha's legs felt like they were filled with lead, making it nearly impossible for her to walk. And the tumor spread, invading the surrounding tissues. It was like a heavy hammer, striking her heart. These words meant that her surgery had failed. The miracle hands had utterly failed. She had performed countless surgeries, but the one on her own husband's tumor had failed. It was a devastating blow to her confidence. No matter how calm Samantha appeared, she couldn't hide the cold sweat covering her forehead. When? When did he? Pass. One hour after you left the hospital. What was she doing then? Attending a wedding. Her wedding with Romeo. Amidst the flowers and balloons. Celebrating joyfully. Her husband was entering the final phase of his life. Chapter 16. Samantha hesitated several times before daring to lift the white sheet off of me. Her hands shook as if she had Parkinson's. Just lift it already. Lifting it will complete the system process. Then I can go home and have my dad's porridge. Samantha finally closed her eyes and pulled it off in one motion. I also saw my own corpse. Tsk. T-S-K. The face is still recognizable, but the body is shattered beyond recognition. The system sighed beside me. At first, Samantha calmly looked at my body. Then she gently stroked my face as if with tenderness. Finally, she lifted my hand to her lips. Alex, get up. Come on. Let's go home. We won't divorce anymore. We'll never divorce. Okay. The room was silent. No one answered her. The assistant stood helplessly at the side, not knowing what to do. Samantha clung to my body, refusing to let go. Her state gradually became more and more frenzied. Alexander, you damn well answer me. Get up. Let's go home. Please? Alex, I'm really begging you. Her tears dripped onto my neck. I don't like this. System, won't this make my body dirty? Host, it's almost over. Just hang in there. How much longer? By midnight, you'll be back in the original world. All right. Just a few more hours, the body couldn't be taken home. Samantha was persuaded by the hospital leadership to go home. It wouldn't look good for a top surgeon to be sitting in the morgue losing her mind. You still need to handle his funeral arrangements, right? Samantha kissed my forehead several times. I frowned as I watched. Even the system couldn't help but mutter. Crazy woman. After repeated urging from her colleagues, Samantha finally walked out of the morgue in a daze. She calmly asked her assistant. Did Alex say anything before he left? He did. Samantha's eyes lit up for a moment. He said, he said, congratulations on your wedding. I hope we never meet again. Sister Sue, Sister Sue, what's wrong? Samantha collapsed heavily to the ground. Her knees hit the floor with a loud thud. She seemed to forget the pain and quickly got back up. Limping, she walked out. I want to go home. Alex said, his stomach hurts. Chapter 17. She used the key to open what was once our home. It was pitch black inside, with only the lights from the city outside illuminating the darkness. She seemed unsure of where the light switch in the living room was, because whenever she came home, the lights were always on. I would be waiting for her on the couch. She called out. Alex. Of course. There was no response. Suddenly, there was a clattering sound from the room. Samantha rushed to the bedroom. A few seconds later, it was as if all the strength had drained from her. There was no one in the bedroom. Of course. It was just the sound of a picture frame falling to the floor. Under the bright fluorescent light, she stood there in a daze for a while. The whole house felt empty like a model home that had never been lived in. Host, you did a great job. I won't leave her any chance to reminisce. That's right. I threw out or donated everything that was mine. The photos in the frames only showed her half of the image. Even the wedding photo was split in half, with her half lying torn on the floor. Finally, she slid down the wall, utterly drained. She held her head in her hands, just as I had when I first discovered her betrayal, curled up in one spot, unable to believe it, yet unwilling to accept it. Ten years. Not ten days. At first, she cried softly, then it turned into loud, gut-wrenching sobs. Alex, I was wrong. I was really wrong. Please come back. Okay. I'm begging you. Please come back. She probably forgot that she once said, is it reasonable for a strong woman like me to cry? But now, she's anything but reasonable. A white light flashed. Host, goodbye. I knew it was time to go home. Host, will you forget me? 
Never. System. You're too adorable. System. Thank you for accompanying me on this unique journey. Goodbye. Goodbye. I'm going home. Extra chapter. Chapter 1. Samantha hadn't been in the operating room for a long time. She developed a stress reaction. As soon as she stepped into the operating room, it was as if she saw Alex lying there. Her instinct was to run away. Dr. Sue, are you really going to perform this surgery today? Yes. Samantha nodded to her assistant. Alex liked me being a doctor. How can I be a doctor if I don't perform surgeries? She gave a bitter smile but still put on her surgical gown. Administer the anesthesia. Make a 15-centimeter incision. At first, everything seemed to be going smoothly. Until the patient's blood began to gush out. Samantha started having difficulty breathing. Cold sweat dripped down her temples. Her mind kept flashing back to Alex lying on the operating table. Alex lying in the morgue. Blood. So much blood. The blood during surgery. The blood from years ago when Alex took a knife for her. Sammy, will you be nicer to me from now on? Of course. I'd give you my life. The scene shifted to Alex pleading with her. Filled with helplessness. Sammy, after the divorce, I'll disappear. Alexander, stop using disappearing to force me. Okay. Alexander, you should see a psychiatrist. Alexander, go see a psychiatrist. I'll arrange it. Samantha, the one who's sick is you. Yes, she was really sick. They had worked so hard to build a home together. A warm, cozy home where a small light always awaited her return. A place where a lonely heart could find solace. How could she not cherish it? Maybe the comfortable days became too monotonous. A bit boring. The pressure of performing surgeries every day. The burden of her reputation. She needed an outlet. Romeo just happened to come into her life. He admired her. Clung to her. And she couldn't shake him off. He was a completely different person from Alex. A vibrant. Fresh presence. Many times. Sitting alone in her car. She thought. Just indulge once. Indulge once. And then return to Alex. She was a doctor. How could she not notice Romeo's health condition? He gave her the report. And she just believed it. Ignorance is bliss. She pursued the divorce with Alex. Only by getting divorced could she quell the deep-seated sense of guilt. She couldn't stand the idea that in Alex's eyes, she was equated with infidelity. Her actions were like robbing Peter to pay Paul. More like walking a tightrope with every step. In the end, she fell into the abyss. Shattered beyond repair. That home. The home with Alex. She could never return to it. Dr. Sue. Dr. Sue. What's wrong? Dr. Sue. The patient is hemorrhaging. It's spreading. This is bad. It's invading the surrounding tissues. Later. Her colleagues at the hospital would often talk about it over meals. Or use it as a cautionary tale. That surgery was a complete failure. The lead surgeon ran out in the middle. Causing irreversible harm to the patient. The lead surgeon was sentenced to three years in prison. After Alex's death. Samantha was no longer the golden surgeon. She couldn't even be a doctor anymore. Alex's favorite doctor. Chapter 2. When Samantha was released from prison. It was during the worship season. I'll take that bouquet. My husband liked lilies. Alex's grave was very clean. It seemed like someone often came to visit. The bright smile in the photo on the tombstone tugged at her heartstrings. Alex was still so young. But in these three years. She had aged as if thirty years had passed. Looking old and haggard. Just as she was about to reach out and touch the photo. A six or seven year old girl's voice came from behind. Don't touch. Don't touch. You're not allowed to pay respects to my godfather. She was the little girl Alex had once saved. Go away. Go away. You married another man and caused my godfather's death. You're not welcome here. Samantha gave a bitter smile. She hadn't expected Alex to be so ruthless. Not even letting her handle his funeral. He entrusted everything to the little girl's family. Samantha walked out of the cemetery in a daze. She looked up at the gray sky. Feeling as if the sky was about to cry. It's raining. Run. With a roar. A torrential downpour fell. It was as if she was back in that summer again. She was a graduate student. And Alex was an undergraduate. Senior. Don't get wet. I have an umbrella. Alex had gently entered her long lonely world like that. By the time they reached the dormitory building. His shoulder was soaking wet. But she was still dry. And she felt guilty. He had completely taken care of her. He smiled. His eyes bright. It's okay. Senior. I'm strong and healthy. He was so kind. How could she have the heart to scold him? To tell him to be more generous? The guilt was like a green sprout. Growing into thick vines inside her. With a thud. Samantha collapsed in the rain. Bright red blood mixed with the rainwater. Spreading across the ground. The knife that Alex had blocked years ago. Had come back to her. This time. No one was there to block it for her. She recognized the person who stabbed her. It was the family member of the patient from her last failed surgery. She deserved it running out of the operating room halfway through, causing the death of someone's most loved one. Those who betray true love never meet a good end. Like her. Samantha. Alex. Will you come to take me away? 
Apart from the sound of the rain, no one answered her. Chapter 3 After she died, she met the system, she begged for a long time, and the system finally agreed to let her see Alex. This is because you were once a doctor and saved many patients. In the peaceful evening, Alex was dozing in a wicker chair at the door. His dad called from inside the house. Alex, what's for dinner? Clay pot porridge, salt and pepper baby potatoes. Gotta have those potatoes. Got it. Your favorite. The guilt in Samantha's heart began to grow again. Because she didn't like eating potatoes. It turned out Alex had accommodated her for 10 years. She couldn't touch him. Only watching as he happily got up from the wicker chair and ran outside. Hey, kid. Stealing my lemons again. They'll make you sour. Brother. I'll make lemon tea for you. Want some? Sure. Samantha then noticed that Alex only had one healthy leg, with the other one fitted with a prosthetic. Brother, you only have one leg. How do you run so fast? Because I'm an alien, with a bionic leg. He was so optimistic, just like the Alex she knew. No wonder he loved running so much, loved sports. It was because of his physical imperfections, but he was still so optimistic, so happy, surrounded by love, loved by so many, and he loved so many in return. His dad, his friends, the little girl he saved, even the cold system, he loved them all, but he didn't love her, he would never take her back, Samantha suddenly realized, with a deep sadness, that even in death, she was so alone, the news from her world was broadcasting, former golden surgeon Dr. Sue was found dead outside her late husband's cemetery, with no one to claim her body, 